So Canada's Food Guide, um, all over the news for the new um, the new food guide that they released, and uh, I, it definitely did need updating. Uh, the old food guide had been there since the early 2000s, I believe, um, so it, it was long overdue. And um, one of the big differences that came out right away was that plate model. And um, right away looking at that and just looking, just you just didn't even need to go too deeply into it, just kind of looking at it from above, you could tell right away that the food guide is not for everyone. And I remember reading up on it and uh, it, there was a professor in Halifax, I believe, who said that this plate looks like the plate of a white upper middle class <laughs> person. <laughs> um, the vegetables within the food guide are very Eurocentric, uh, things like broccoli, sweet potato, healthy, but um, not very cultural. <laughs> um, personally, just speaking from my personal experience, looking at those vegetables, I don't eat those a lot. And um, it can almost seem like the ones that I do eat are not healthy just because they're not represented there. Um, also as well, just the plate model in general, it, it is a good model, it is a great way of showing people how to separate your plate, having half of it be fruits and vegetables, a quarter of it carbohydrates or starches, and then a quarter protein. But um, that I also find is not very culturally sensitive as a lot of times our plates don't look like that. <laughs> um, I know my cultural foods, it, everything is mixed together, you rarely have I, I would, there was no way I could be able to separate my fruits and vegetables onto the side to see. So it can be hard to, you know, use that model to teach people how to eat healthy just because it's not really representative of the foods that they eat. Um, there are some efforts in the recipe section that I noticed. Um, how, I'm not sure who they actually like consulted to make these recipes, but I did notice one recipe there from my own personal culture and it was not very authentic. <laughs> um, but it's, I guess, a step in the right direction. It's not bad, but at the same time, it, you know, in terms of cultural representation, there it's not for everyone. And um, I think this is really important for healthcare professionals to be aware of because oftentimes, um, they find themselves, here's a resource, handing it out, there you go, that's it. And that's not the best way mm -hmm. to deal with clients of different cultures. Um, I think that something like cultural competency is really important for all healthcare professionals to be aware of. To be aware of different cultures, of different ethnicities, different backgrounds, and to just make that effort to get to know um, where they're coming from. And food especially is like food culture identity is like this, like it's so integrated. You are who you eat, you are what you eat. That definitely is a symbolically true saying for sure. Um, food is something that connects people from like, it has like a biological dimension and then a cultural and social dimension as well. It kind of carries you throughout that. There's that social function as well as that nutritional function. So um, definitely taking everything that as a learning opportunity, um, being all ears and kind of stepping away from any stereotypes that you might have to hear what this client or patient has to say. Um, showing them the food guide and asking them how they feel about it might be a really good thing to do. Um, I can think of personally, if I was a client or a patient and you know, a dietitian or a nurse or any healthcare professional handed me the food guide and said, what do you think about this? I'd be like, that does not look like something that I eat often. And then maybe we can go from there and okay, what kind of foods do you eat? And you know, what, what does health mean to you? What does nutrition mean to you? Um, I do think that healthcare professionals do lack that conversation. And there's a lot of reasons why sometimes there's a lack of time, which is so unfortunate. Um, but I think that that should be a part of that rapport building when you you know when you are dealing with a patient or a client and really understanding their background and we do see that a lot of ethnic and cultural minorities within Canada are the ones who experience a lot of chronic diseases and I do strongly believe that once these conversations have been taking place that we can kind of reduce some of those health disparities that we see and it it could be as simple as having a conversation <laughs> I would love to see more vegetables and fruits that aren't very Eurocentric. <laughs> um, 
in my culture, we have things like eggplant and okra, zucchini. Um, I didn't see any of those on there, and I'm sure other cultures can also add their vegetables there. Um, also, I feel like it would be, I don't know if this is possible to do, I thought about this, to have a, a healthy plate that wasn't separated in like the half and then the quarter and the quarter. Maybe have it kind of mixed together and yeah, I don't know if it's like how, what the logistics of it would be like, but it would be interesting to see how that worked um, to give it a try. Um, yeah, a more variety of foods because, you know, as Canadians, like, you know, Canada's Food Guide would have been a really good opportunity to showcase the multiculturalism within Canada. And I do feel like it missed that mark because of the foods that they chose to represent on that plate.